Okay, I'll have to start again. <laughs> Hello, this is Clara, but you can call me Mother, and welcome to the Studio Utani podcast. I am here today with blogger and I guess a perfect organism contributing host, uh, Dave Gogol. Hey, Dave. There how's you it go. going? Hello. All right. Happy yelling day, everybody. Cheers. Uh, sorry, I've had a hell of a night. My son's been really sick. I've been trying to take care of the kids and they're still screaming and crying in the background. So I apologize for that. Anna, could you please come? I'm doing a live stream. Please, <laughs> we, pretty we have, please. We have, fa- we have trained face huggers for that, you know. I don't know where your bag is. <laughs> Bye, kids. <laughs> <sighs> All right. <laughs> Listen. We have a specifically trained face huggers for these Jesse type of situations, all right? So. <laughs> yes. Uh, and on that topic, have you have you watched Alien Alone yet? I have. What did you think of it? I thought it was a cool idea. The execution, I thought, was okay. Mm-hmm. I like the idea. I thought it was, you know, it kind of reminded me of a David type storyline, but in the um, the alien uh, aesthetics. But I thought overall, it just came across a little too cheesy for my take. Oh, it, it was too cute. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind cute, but in terms of the way it was executed, I don't unless I completely missed a point, which is possible. I mean, I did watch it after Endgame, so maybe my brain wasn't there. Not that it ever is, mm. but uh, I mean, I'll give it another rewatch. But the first viewing, I didn't like it too much. Um, Harvest, I really liked. Though both of them, again, I need to rewatch both of them because I, right when I came home from uh, the movie, I just popped them both on with my. My intention was probably elsewhere, so I should give them a rewatch. <laughs> sure, no problem. Um, so I guess let's start off. Uh, our this is my first Alien Day uh, live stream um, for Same here. this year. <laughs> How, how is, how's all the Alien Day stuff been for you? Like, is there anything that you've been excited about or, or really uh, happy it's been announced? In years past or this one in particular? Huh? This one or years past? Uh, this one. Um, yeah, I thought the, a uh, couple of them actually, the, um, the art book, the art book, 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 I'm just gonna make up words. <laughs> the art book, um, sounds really cool with their all sorts of everyone from, of course, uh, Dane Halland, Dane Halland and Rory Lucille contributing. That's going to be really awesome. Um, the tabletop game, which you just announced, seems really good. It's not normally my type of thing, um, but it seems like something I want to dive into, like the Legendary Encounters um, card game. is not normally my cup of tea either, but it's nice just doing different stuff for the Alien Universe I don't normally do. Mm-hmm. And the idea of kind of doing some uh, different scenarios and expanding on other things in the alien universe with that tabletop game seems very interesting. I think that could be a lot of fun. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I'm really excited about, uh, the idea of the tabletop game because all of my friends like playing board games and we're always playing things like, I don't know, ticket to ride and and stuff like that. Carcassonne. Yeah. Not really any. Yeah. yeah, There's some other, there's some one, Alien inspired one called Nemesis. Me and my uh, couple friends, um, they played it once. We're actually going to try to do a game uh, next Friday. It's supposed to be good. So I'm looking forward to that as well. It's a nice, uh, different experience. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay. Uh, just before we get underway with all of the discussion about uh, xenomorphing and stuff, I've got a couple of announcements. Now, I've uh, been working on a project with Alex White, and he has created a compositional piece to go along with his uh, chapter seven of the cold forge and he's made it available now so i've just nice. published it to a uh, utani blog you can go through the link and um he's actually uh got me to create the cover art for it so i've included that as well and his th- this music is free to download and listen to i really love it um what i found is that when you listen to the music it really encapsulates the impending danger and the urgency of the situation with Blue and Marcus uh, and, and trying to seal the, the ship and 
stop the xenomorphs from coming out. Uh, and also with the help of Dick Mackey, who <laughs> endeavours to distract Blue uh, from the task at hand enough so that the stress doesn't overwhelm her. And I must say, creating this for Alex pretty much did the same for me leading up to Alien Day. It was a welcome diversion from editing podcasts and preparing blog posts. So uh, thank you, Alex, for letting me contribute. It was very therapeutic and rewarding. <laughs> I look forward to hearing that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, um, it's a nice little combo. <laughs> yeah. Can never can never go wrong with anything involving Cold Forge. More, more, more. Yes. <laughs> and and uh, on a side note, we want a sequel to the Cold Forge or another book by Alex White. <laughs> uh, yes, please. Otherwise, facehuggers will be tossed. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, I'll just flash up the cover art for people to see. Ta-da! You can see it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Woo! Okay. Um, I can just leave that in the corner. No problem. Okay. So, what can we talk about? Oh my god, this, it's just been so so long. So, um. I know, right? Let's start. I'm just actually. <laughs> you know, Sorry, you go. <laughs> no, I just wanted to. I'm just having a freaking mind blank now. And they were released before. Alien Day, but I just want for those Alien fans that have not checked it out, give me a second one delay here because I can't think of the name because I am having a senior moment apparently. Oh, was the instrumental albums by Aphotic Apathy? Oh um, yes, they're good. <laughs> they made they made yeah an Alien I an Alien Ice Isolation themed one, um, a Engineers themed one, and a David themed one. They are awesome. For instrumentals are. Anything alien related, which I would assume are since you're listening to this, definitely check it out. A couple of them are free if you pay for them. They're only a couple bucks. I'm, of course, think I'm clever. I bought one for $4.26, so they don't exactly break the bank. Highly <laughs> recommend it. They're on, they're on um, uh, Bandcamp, I think it is, right? Yep, Bandcamp. Think, yeah, yeah, they're on Bandcamp, so uh, definitely give that a shot. Yeah, yeah, good you, background, chill, you should good music. Good do stuff. a blog post with a link to all three of them. Write about what I you should. love about those pieces, because I would like to see. That that, that, that would make sense. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start from the beginning. How did you create, why did you create Xenomorphing, the blog? Um, well, I was out of, I could say, the Alien game for a long time. After resurrection and the navy p movies like i was always watching a couple of them but my fandom just pretty much died i guess you could say i mean i was still a fan but it was just kind of there um then after Prometheus just released um i was back to discussing the movies with my friends again and then that's when the dark horse came out with uh, the comics they they kind of rebooted the comics with a uh, fire and stone so then I started reviewing those for um, someone who I network through Twitter. He's he runs the Hulking uh, reviewer blog. So him and I are becoming friends, and he just he was getting um, he would do video games or comic book reviews. He let me do the Alien ones, so I did that. And then from there, I you know I discovered Alien fandom with the Wayland Tanny Bolton, and that's where I also met um, like Jamie and um, and Aaron and. I decided just from talking to them all the time, I'm like, you know, maybe I should give this a shot. <laughs> so I finally, after procrastinating for a year and a half, got it up and running, you know, like that dog meme. I had no idea what I'm doing. I just started, I did some Alien Covenant preview or something, and that started that. I just I just felt I could bring something a little different to the fandom, and um, I just kind of ran with it. Cool. Um how? Kind of scattershot timeline there, but what? <laughs> it's Fuck okay. Uh, Whatever. How, how did you? Um, because I I kind of found you through you tagging my blog. Um, uh, <clears throat> you done the what is this? Um, like a oh, straight. Yeah, you you were um searching out like God, different. Like forever ago. Yeah, it was so long ago. I was in the Wailing Utani Bulletin back then. <laughs> But we shall not talk about I said, that. <laughs> I um, have no problems with them, but we'll... Uh... <laughs> yeah, they've got plenty of problems with me, but that's okay. 
They're good. I'm good. It's all good. <laughs> exactly. Moving um, on. So yeah, you you tagged my blog. You said that I'm a I'm a new blog, and um, I was like really surprised. I was like, whoa, I'm being noticed. I didn't I didn't realize <laughs> that this was a thing. And uh, and then I met you through Perfect Organism. So how how did you yes. get brought onto the team with them? Um, I got I got spoiled. I posted that first um article entry and then i remember similar to you in the stromo files um i think it was shared it i'm like oh this is a thing i'm like huh what's going on here <laughs> and then i posted it and i don't know how jamie and um ryan saw it so they put it on um they shared it on the perfect organism page and the article got more views than i ever thought possible um then i posted another one they shared that too and then i guess from the article I read, um, Jamie and Ryan messaged me. I think they were messaged. They messaged Michael too. They wouldn't know if I could come on as a, a guest spot, and that was that. And they that reeled that. you in. <laughs> and now and they you... did. They did. I went from having no idea what really fandom is, was, or what it consisted of to neck deep in it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, "What is going on? <laughs> I just want to write. What the?" <laughs> <laughs> And, 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 it, and it got pretty intense, say, hey? because then I joined um, PO mm -hmm. and we were on, I guess, uh, roundtables just about every single week talking about. Yeah, we had a we had a nice little motley crew there. Yeah, it was really awesome. Um, and now, I guess, what uh, what do you do now? Like, because um, you've, I've you've been, been trying to figure that work. out. For, I've been trying to figure that out for four decades, so I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> You're just, uh, you, you've been busy with work. I know you haven't been yeah. posting as much alien stuff as, as you know. No, fortunately to. not. Yeah. At least, at least I got a little help now. I got, um, I got a uh, former other PO, uh, founder. I got Ryan helping me out. Um, I got, uh, Michael helped me out who does Worlds of Tomorrow and I think he helps you out as well. Yeah. So at least I have a couple, I got a couple, um, helpers cause I just don't have the time. Oh, but uh, I can totally to work on understand. <laughs> Gosh, I have eight million ideas in my head, but then uh, life comes in and goes, "Nah, bro, uh, uh, nope." Uh, when are we gonna do our <laughs> David's Lab blog post together? <laughs> oh God, fifteen years later. <laughs> well, I'm still waiting. <laughs> now everyone knows about it. We're gonna have to hassle you. <laughs> Seriously. But uh, I'm trying to keep trying to do more stuff. I want to review stuff with the comics and the music thing. You have is a good idea. I just kind of go with the flow. And my blog is a lot more um, laid back than some of the others. I try to have kind of a, a more laid back vibe, which I think people, or I hope the eight people who read it uh, enjoy, because there's a lot of a lot of the alien blogs out there and podcasts. They're all similar type of tone, which is fine. They're all much better than I could ever do and much smarter. I kind of try to bring a more, you know, everyday, normal um, vibe to it. And, you know, I just kind of go with the flow. Whatever I have an idea, I just go with it. That's it. No, no <laughs> rhyme or reason. <laughs> Most of the time. I, I already know what your, uh, what your tastes are in the Alien films. Would you like to share with, uh, I guess, the rest of the fandom and people who are following us today on Twitch? Um what what your thoughts on the alien films are and, and uh, which characters you like sure um put it this way this is i'm one of the few people who could legit say i like a little bit of everything i am probably the only person you could talk to that have been kicked out of two different alien groups at different times with two different viewpoints and i was let back in because that's how awesome i am <laughs> i once i once i could kicked out of a prequel group temporarily and i got kicked out of an old school group Temporarily. That's how split my views are down the middle. <laughs> I love Alien Aliens are my two favorites. Um, I was a hipster with Alien 3. I was kind of on it before. Um, or before maybe everyone just, else does. With internet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, oh. So that's, it's nice to see getting some love. Um, the prequels, I have a love-hate relationship with. I adore Prometheus, but I know the movie has more flaws than some of my exes. But I fucking love the movie. <laughs> love, love love it i know it has parts of it i understand why people hate it but i don't know why maybe it's i just have that attachment to it kind of got me back into fandom but i love prometheus 
Covenant is parts of it I could talk about all day. Other parts make me want to dive head first into a wood chipper. <laughs> but I'm a but I'm a fan of both. Um, it's I'm I'm in the movies for everything. I like the quiet of Alien, the the action and commodity of Aliens Three, the the emptiness and um, isolation, no pun intended, of Alien Three, um, Alien Resurrection, when the credits roll. I really enjoy it. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> The prequels, I just like the ideas they opened up. Um, some of the stuff with David, um, I really enjoy. Though I kind of like what they did more with him in Prometheus than in uh, Covenant. I just like a little bit of everything, man. I have whatever fits my mood. That's all I put the franchise. There's something for everything. <laughs> That's so cool. And I, I love that we both love Prometheus. <laughs> yeah, I can't. You know what? It's. I think people are so fucking obsessed with Covenant these days, whether it's saying the stuff they didn't like about it or going over the top with what they like about it. I feel like Prometheus just sitting there like, hey, yo, what's up? <laughs> what's going on? You guys forget about me? And uh, uh, people are people are reforming over Alien 3, which is great. And, of course, Alien Aliens are always um, there. But Prometheus just sitting there like, hey, what's up, guys? Hey. I think Prometheus struggles to be recognized as an alien <laughs> film because originally Ridley Scott didn't want it to be an alien film. Yeah, that, that's the problem. Like, I love the movie, but it's not really an alien film. Like, at the end with the, the Deacon, it was one of those um, how it should have ended videos. I thought it was hysterical. At the end, they had the Deacon, like the de- Deacon whispers, prequel, which is pretty much. <laughs> what it, it was, there was no need for that fucking thing. I like it, but there was absolutely no need for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't think I stayed long enough in the cinema because it was after the credits roll. So yes, I it was. So I completely missed it. And then we're talking about this thing and I was like, what? What? <laughs> that's funny. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's pretty funny. But I, I've said it before. Like What I like, what I originally liked with Prometheus, even though it was kind of alien but not really his original idea, it was kind of, it would kind of be like a side quill type thing where it was... Not alien, but it was. It was like running parallel to the franchise, and then he just changed his mind with what he wanted to do, and then we ended up with Covenant with its weird <laughs> mix of genres and movies. Yeah, but, it's, um, it's... I like Prometheus for being <laughs> different and a legit different. Yeah, I I really love Prometheus and and before when I when I hated Covenant um I I really was angry with how things went because I really <coughs> wanted the side quill thing to keep going I thought there was yeah. a lot more to explore there and I think we we kind of end up boxing ourselves into a corner when you when you make a movie like Alien Covenant because you're right. you're retreading the same ground, but at the same time you have to try to shock people, and I think that's that's kind of where it suffered. Even though I love the movie, yeah. <laughs> that's that's, that's yeah, what I feel about it. Because it really went from his whole thing. He he said all he when he was obsessed with the, uh, the 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 jockey in the chair and where they came from, and then Covenant came around. Whether it was him and Fox, either or. He's like, yeah, you know what? I really like artificial intelligence. I wish I did Blade Runner 2049. Let's focus on David. And you know what? Let's come, I want it to be like Star Wars, so let's put in musical cues. It'll be like a reboot sequel thing. Uh, <laughs> it just didn't work. <laughs> for, for other people. For me, it, yeah, it, it's, it did eventually, but you know. Yeah, no, I, it's, I, listen, I've said it 100% why you, if you don't like either movie or if you don't like both. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Trust me, I get it. And and that's one of the things that I guess we both encounter on on Twitter. So for, for people who don't know, um, Dave is uh, Xenomorphing forty six. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. So you can follow mm. you can follow him on on Twitter and and see his uh, I guess. <laughs> uh, you, guys, alien, you can follow me. <laughs> you gotta follow. Oh, good him. luck. I um I don't. <laughs> I don't hold anything back. I'm very fair. I'm very even. <laughs> yes. I will and challenge the shit out of you. <laughs> he, he is brutal. So <laughs> be prepared. But fair. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I Dave, don't. Dave, go for president. 
I don't kiss ass to anybody, or I just, it is what it is. I'm not here to <laughs> make your uh, opinions feel superior to anyone else's. They are what they are. <laughs> And I'm fully aware mine are mine are awful and flawed and full of shit. So, <laughs> and, and I, I guess that's the thing with us as Alien fans. We all like the movies for different reasons. So, you can't go to someone you like for me. Oh, you have to love Alien Resurrection because this, this, and this, and this. Because you're like, mm, I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. Luck <laughs> report spam. <laughs> and you know. That's the thing, like, even your love of Prometheus and my love of Prometheus is starkly uh, different in the fact that we, we love right. it for, for different reasons. Uh, could you share with us those reasons? Because I know, but uh, the fandom out there might not know. Uh, no, it's none of your business. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> for me, I liked, <laughs> I liked the, um, just the ideas that it brought up with uh, creation and as a kid, I felt like really said, I actually love the idea of the, the space jockey and what was behind it. And him, the, revealing the engineers, though, I still think the space jockey is going to be something else. I thought the ideas the engineers are, as me and Jamie said, they're, I think they're iconic. I think it's a really cool idea of them, you know, whatever, seeding other planets and um, creation. It just opens up a whole new love of world and uh, mythos within the alien universe, what I think is really cool. Like even in uh, the comics, when they explore the new stuff, the Prometheus stuff, I find the most interesting because we've never really visited it before. Um, it just, you know, it gives us a little different, a different avenue of the universe we could uh, talk to and, um, you know, theorize about. Like when Prometheus first came out, there was me and this was before, of course, I joined any sort of, um, groups or whatnot there were some of my friends we were in like group text messages or we'd hang out have a couple of beers and we'd sit there we just trade back prometheus theories it was cool i couldn't remember the last time i did that in a movie so that alone i thought was um was worth it and like i said before for me it kind of re it woke my fandom out of a out of a cryo sleep and that you know uh was obviously a little bit key because without that you wouldn't have my loud mouth on this podcast right now <laughs> so a little the movie gets an extra half a star for that sentimental <laughs> piece of history. Uh, what what aspects of of David do you like in Prometheus versus how he's portrayed in Covenant? Because I know that was a a, a big factor for you um, having yeah. feeling that disconnect because you were so uh, so in love with uh, the character of David in Prometheus. Yes, for me in Prometheus, what I like is. Um, Unsurprising, I like his little element of he, he knew what he was. You didn't re really know what he was about. It was very subtle. He kind of had his own agenda, but was independent. He kind of he wasn't. You weren't sure what side he was on, but you kind of knew it was very subtle and well played. And of course, Fassbender's performance is uh, movie stealing. Um, but I like that just element of mystery that, to me, in Covenant, I think too much of it is is gone. He almost became, becomes like a standard a standard villain. Like when um, he tells, when, um, when he asks Orm, you know, about the people on the, the colonists, and he says, how many? You could almost see him, like, twirling his mustache. Oh, really? How many colonists? I'm going to time all the train tracks. That's what I'm going to To me, he became too much of a, you know, a poetry reciting villain, which is something we've seen often. And I think David deserved better than that, where he was more nuanced. There's a lot more stuff that I think made him more unique in Prometheus, to me at least. Mm. Where I thought in Covenant, in Covenant he became too out there. It's like, uh, all right, dude, I get it. I get it. You like poetry? You like plays. You don't like humans. All right, bro, I get it. I get it. Where in Prometheus, it's like, what? Yeah, I don't like you, but I kind of like you. All right, what are you up to? For me, at least. That's what, that was my disconnect. Yeah, I, I kind of like his very um, 
uh, the, the way he said things in Prometheus was very, like, innuendo-filled. <laughs> yeah. It was kind of funny I because the... he was an android, but then he was making these jokes of these humans. So, like, is is he yeah, being yeah. a dick or is he just saying yeah. stuff? <laughs> I, I... I think my favorite one was, uh, that's what they called a hypothesis doctor. <laughs> I love that one. Yeah, that one was a really good one. Yeah. Um, and uh, one other thing I liked too in Prometheus was, um, I forgot who I was discussing with, when he poisons Holloway, when he asks him, what would you do? If I don't think if he, if he didn't say anything, would he have done it or not? So I think that was the cue he was waiting for. Yeah. That was, you know, Holloway. And I like that little touch. I thought that little, just those little nuances that I like. Yeah. Have Have you listened to the um, writer's commentary for Prometheus? Um. No. Ah, oh, you should totally listen to no. it. It's It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I have it on my list. I have it on my list of things to listen to, but I never got around to it. <laughs> okay. Well, I want a live tweet for when you do do it. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> I won't spoil it for you, but you should totally listen to it. All right. Uh, after what you've said, it's just very re- <laughs> relevant. <laughs> All right. I, I still got to do my Alien Covenant live tweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. It'll be like shit, 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 shit. shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, we've got a I, question. I, my, the Prometheus live tweet was a goddamn good time. <laughs> oh, that was so much fun. I, I, I'd love for you, you to do that again. Um. Yeah, uh, we've got a question from the audience. So, so we're live casting on on Twitch for people uh, who are watching this on YouTube or on Facebook. Three um, D Punks wants to ask: Considering what happened to the engineers in Covenant, do we think if Ridley made the final prequel, uh, we won't see any more engineers? Do you think Ridley is done with them? No, I don't think so. You think there's definitely going to be at least one engineer? I think so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's going to be... Oh, I guess it depends on how much the makeup department gets <laughs> for their <Yes>. budget. <laughs> but I think... That, What's, what, the, what the budget is? <laughs> yeah, I guess they can just, just, you know, make up um, uh, one guy and then just put a lot of them... <laughs> the scene just cg him in just just clone them all (laughs) yeah um but i I guess because of the way that ridley's talking about the last prequel being war War of the worlds i think yeah i think definitely there's going to be at least a a, more than a few engineers so hopefully Uh, i don't want this to be the last of the engineers that we see because it'll be kind of sad because they looked so grand in prometheus yeah especially Especially after all that work and you couldn't wait to talk about him. And then it's like, eh, just kidding. But come on, man. <laughs> come <Yeah>. on, bro. <laughs> uh, it was just, yeah, it was disappointing. Um, yeah. Apart from the the films, you said that you, you read the comics. Uh, at, I know, like, you read the comics and the EU books as well. Um, yeah, the, the comics, you... the novels, uh, you name it. Yeah. Hashtag nerd and proud. <laughs> Which uh, which comics would you say uh, are, are your uh, favorite, and which of the comics that have recently mm. been released do you enjoy reading? Mm. Um, favorites of all time. Um, they're popular answers, but um, Labyrinth and um, what's it? Apocalypse Destroying Angels are incredible. Um, I have a soft spot for the ones that came out. Um, after the movie, before Alien 3, the, the Alien sequel comics uh, were fantastic. The Aliens book 1, 2, and 3, or whatever uh, they're called. Um, and my, I think what I have the biggest soft spot, though, for even though the artwork is a little hit or miss inside is Earth War, because that was the one that got me into it. I thought the covers were gorgeous. You know, I'm sitting there going to a comic book store. I'm just used to seeing, you know, Wolverine, Magneto, Batman, you know, Marvel, DC. And I'm like, there's, there's, there's the Alien comics? And I go, what the fuck is this? <laughs> so I picked, I picked up Earth War issue one and I was done. Um, I thought that was really cool, especially at the end when they introduced the, um, like the, the Queen's Royal Guards, which I thought was a fantastic idea, which is something that would be neat, to, which would be cool to introduce in the future movies. Um, for the recent ones, um, 
Defiance is probably one of my favorites. Um, for the new ones, uh, the Fire and Stone was really good. Um, well, the new ones haven't finished yet. Like Resistance, but the Resistance is good. Um, I thought Dust to Dust was okay. I didn't. I thought the end was all right. But um, yeah, I think that's it. Something a bit more controversial. Which which of the uh, Alien e- EU releases have you not liked? Like you feel like they they didn't really capture um, the Alien universe properly, or, or the book was too difficult to read? Uh, have you encountered um, anything like that? I think off the top of my head. Um, I thought Life or Death was too safe. It was just kind of there. Like, I finished reading it, and I didn't really, um, it didn't really grab me. It was, I liked that it made, it was released in a better way than Fire and Stone, which was all over the place. Um, but I thought they went too safe. Mm. And I thought the, the ending, uh, spoiler with the uh, engineers, maybe time traveling was completely unnecessary. That's opening up a whole other can of worms. We do not, we 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 don't need Star Trek engineers. Mm, let's just yeah. <laughs> what do we look like, the Terminator franchise? <laughs> yeah, seriously, we must go back in time. To stop the engineer. Oh god, I said I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> the Sarah Connor, Ellen Ripley. Oh boy, I said alright, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Apologize to everyone if you can hear screaming in the background. Kids are just going nuts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not being able to be in the rest of the house while I'm doing this podcast. So <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> and I apologize to my children as well if you're watching this in future. <laughs> bad mother. Bad mother. Um, okay. Uh, just for uh, the sake of talking about i guess uh what's what's been happening um with alien and uh this year the alien shorts what what do you feel was i guess the best release or announcement um (laughs) um that's a good question i think the shorts i think the shorts have had the best um response out of all of them i mean for what they did on those budgets were fantastic. And I thought they did a great job of kind of reintroducing people to what the franchise, um, what the franchise feels like, which I think is very important. Um, They're kind of like reaching out with a lot of newbies now, aren't they? Yeah. Which I think is, um, is a good way to go. Um, Especially, in these days of where everything is Marvel, DC, Marvel, DC, it's, you kind of gotta, you gotta find a way to retrain, reprogram, um, the fans show, you know, cause I think, I hope Fox slash Disney need to realize the alien audience is, is a little different. Um, cause it's not, it's not going to have barring, uh, a huge breakout like aliens, which I think broke the mold and took everybody by surprise in terms of its popularity. Cause without aliens, it's the movie's not a household name. Like it is now. It's not on lunch pails. It's not on, there's no memes, it's not on coffee cups. There's no alien day without aliens. Cause that took the movie from uh, a critic's favorite and hardcore horror fans favorite to everybody. And I think, Fox and Disney need to find out where the franchise is. And I think these movies have given us the best barometer of what it could be and the audience it has. Mm, absolutely. I feel like this year it's, it's been a, a good effort of them putting out <clears throat> yes. content. Yes. Considering the it's situation very focused, that it's they're very in. Organized. Yes. Mm. Uh, I guess things have been a bit, Rocky <laughs> because of the Disney Fox we, merger. Yeah. Uh, maybe One, we would what, have gotten something better if that. that wasn't happening. <laughs> we might have, but um, considering Fox, Fox's track record with the series, um, I think in hindsight, maybe it ends up 
being a benefit because of something I've said um, before. Since Aliens blew the sh- fuck up, it seemed like Fox had no idea what to do after that. It was like, what do we do? Alien 3, which we all love now, was a... I mean, it's... It's tales of production are going to be told until we're long gone. <laughs> <laughs> and Resurrection, mm-hmm. we all know. The AVP movies, we all know. The prequels are all fresh in our minds with their... They're all over the place in terms of popularity and divisiveness and what Fox wanted and what he wanted. And Fox... Disney, even though they sometimes drive me crazy with their... Uh, what I call like uh, assembly line movies, mm. they're all very crisp. They're very... The very why even the movie the Marvel movies which I can't stand are watchable, for the most part. It's a different. I guess there for two hours and not, you know, want to um, throw myself through the TV, and I don't want Alien to be assembly line, but having it under a house that is organized and clean, I think, will be a big help. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, we've got another question um, from Bystander Crux. Uh, they say, if time travel is a thing, we might include a rival into the universe. Uh, like as in like other movies that are not connected to aliens. So on that note, what do you think about accepting other movies like Blade Runner or, or Outland into the alien universe? Um, I mean, it's fun to theorize. Outland, Outland definitely fits. Um, but... And Blade Runner can arrival not so much. It's fun to throw around, and I know a lot of movies throwing a little whaling stuff or alien stuff here or there, like even Firefly. I think on the the HUD they have a little whaling Utani symbol. Mm. I think if it's in it's in the right um, aesthetic, it could fit. But I kind of like keeping everything separate. Yeah, like I think it's it's fun to think about, but I don't I don't know. What whether it's worth trying to juggle all of that different no. <laughs> different factors in, in different movies. Um, yeah, it's just it's, it's too much. It's the same as trying to put Alien and AVP in the same universe because in AVP, the aliens are easily defeated, but in Alien, they just seem indomitable. So, Right, right. Yeah, it it's, just doesn't um... make sense to me. <laughs> At least with the AVP, from like a, um, an action standpoint, it works. You know, considering the best hunters with the, you know, that makes sense. Their best challenge would be the uh, the perfect organism. So at least that way it works. But it's um, it's it's not something in terms of all the those two at least have a, some sort of natural puzzle piece fit. Those other ones, eh? I mean. I don't really want to have to watch. I don't want to need to watch an alien movie and wonder if it's a replicant or a synthetic. It's just you know, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't need a Blade Runner coming and hunting Bishop. It's just unnecessary. <laughs> yeah, that would be really weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> but is... those two at least make sense. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because uh, uh, yeah, I could see you know um, what's his face working for Whalen. You know that 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 at least is feasible. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, what are, what are your thoughts on like since everything has come out now and it's Alien J? What what are your thoughts on um, Neil Blomkamp's Alien Five? Have have they changed? Um, yeah, I used to be all about it, um, but now I'm at the point where I'm just ready for something new. And of course, it would be nice to have some sort of closure for the prequels. Um, despite of how they were received, I think um, a conclusion would be the way to go. I don't know if we'll ever see it on film. I'd love to see um, maybe Dark Horse pick it up or Titan Books for either a novel or comic. Some sort of conclusion would be nice um, if we don't get it in movie form or Netflix or Hulu or whatever. Um, but I'm ready for just new. New, mm. new timeline, new heroes, um, Stop connecting everything to, um, you know, Ripley. And, like, if you want to make kind of like LV426 kind of the ground zero, that's fine. But just let's go brand new. Go new with just little mentions or hints from the past. And that's what I'm ready for. Mm, Ready for new characters, new storylines, because there's enough. Because that's what frustrated me the most with, 
the prequels and Alien Resurrection, like you have all these all this time to play with, and that's what you do. You have fifty seven years between <laughs> Alien and Aliens, or even after, um, like the comics and Alien Alien and I, Alien Isolation are showing. There's plenty to play with. I mean, hell, even after Ripley dies, you could pick you could pick stuff up with the company and um, people hunting for it, you know, for profit or eradication. There's so much, there's so much, there's a large sandbox to play with. Give me something new, you know, but I wouldn't for my own selfishness, find some way to conclude the prequels, whether whatever the medium is. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts on um, the, uh, what is it? Um, Alien, Three from Audible. That's um. That's just come out. I pre-ordered mine, so there's your answer. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. It's, yeah, that's um. That was quite a surprise. As I look up out uh, of my social media feed uh, on break at work, I'm like, wait, what? Michael Bean and Lance Henriksen? Where's the pre-order button? What's what's? Where's the? I'm like, all right. <laughs> I'm sold. Oh, those were cool comics, by the way. I forgot to mention those. My bad. Completely oh, slipped my mind. The, um, the William Gibson the Alien 3, that was a wonderful treat. Yeah. Uh, like, I, <clears throat> I I was actually waiting for the entire comic to, to come out. Yeah, it's, but um... I, I haven't had the chance to read it yet. I'm up to page three. <laughs> but the problem with comics is well, kids can rip them really easily, so I can't, ex- yeah. <laughs> can't read them around them. Yeah. Mm. I um I buy them all digital because I just don't have the room to stack all the comics, so I just buy them all digital and read them on my tablet. I miss having the um the physical because it's just so much better, but I can't. I'm not room as it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all digital. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to go digital for that one as well. I'm gonna buy it right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. But it's cool. It's a cool, interesting, re- interesting read. Nice little alternate take on uh, Alien 3. But you, I know that you're not all about Alien because I know you, you play no. other games and do other things. So so what, yeah. what are your uh, hobbies? I know you, you love sport. I'm not a sport person, so yes. don't ask me to, a, to know what your teams are. I am <laughs> arguably a bigger uh, into sports than I am Alien sports. I'm watching, playing, that's definitely my, um, uh, my thing. Um, my main big baseball, basketball, hockey, football, you name it. Um, but I'm also a huge horror movie fan. Um, slashers, you know, the classics, Jason, Michael, uh, Freddy, Hellraiser, Chucky, um, you name it. Um, I get bored. I'm that, I'm that freak who when needs something to watch. I scroll through horror movies, look for something I've never heard before to watch or I'll watch one again. Um, easily my favorite genre. Um, you know, Star Wars, big into. Um, what else? Um, gamer, I play games. I'm all over the place, really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, someone just uh, said in the stream chat, Critters. Do you like Critters? Uh, yes, I do. I saw the trailer for the new one. There's a straight to video sequel that's coming out. Yeah, I love Critters. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Gremlins. Oh, I love Gremlins. Oh, yeah. I. I... Uh, Gremlins used to give me nightmares when I was a kid. Really? Yeah. That was actually the first movie where I kind of discovered movie scores. I'm like, what is this? This is cool. I'm like, uh, that's when I rent like Danny Elfman. I think it was Elfman who did that. Or mm-hmm. shit. Um, I'm like, what is this? I'm like, this is awesome. And of course, I got into Star Wars. I'm like, opened up a whole new realm. I'm like, this is great. <laughs> Are you excited about the new Star Wars films? I am. I am. Anything. Star Wars is really my first geek love, so I get excited for it regardless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are there, uh, out of the new movies, which one do you think resonates with you the most? Huh. Like um, the Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, Rogue One, Solo? Um, Force Awakens, I think, definitely um, there, because I love the introduction to the new characters and it, it felt like star wars um i like parts of last jet i like the whole thing with kylo um i love solo i think it's um for myself yes. you put it, <laughs> i think it's a bit overlooked um it it fucking feels like star wars it does a couple silly things 
But my God, what a movie. Ron Howard shot, shot some gorgeous action sequences. I think it's very, very well done. Um, it's just I know so people much love fun. Ro- <laughs> it's a ton of fun. I went to sit in the theater with a buddy of mine, and I'm like expecting the worst. And we walked out like, holy shit, what's, like, what the fuck's wrong with people? <laughs> I'm like, what an awesome movie. <laughs> I would have to say Rogue One is my favorite, but yeah, I really yeah. enjoyed Solo. Solo is just, <laughs> it's just great. It's, it's a blast. Yeah. It's, and, I um, love the tone of Rogue One and, you know, I like its, um, you know, rough, depressing ending. I think that's great. The rest of the movie didn't resonate with me as it did with others, but I, you know, I do like it. Hmm. Uh, out of the new films that have been announced for Star Wars, which one? Are you interested in the most? Um, God, which announcements have I missed? <laughs> the Man- I think the, the Mandalorian. Yeah, I think that's the one. Yeah, that's one. I, that's isn't that a is that a TV series or a movie? It might be a TV series. <laughs> that's it's the one so I, hard because Disney is I, now this <laughs> juggernaut. I just think that every single announcement is a movie, but it's not. It's, a TV. <laughs> it's either yeah, going to that's, the that's new the streaming one series. A, yeah. 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 Falling out. Yeah, that's that's the one I'm most excited about. Awesome. Yep, tough and serious. Yep, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> what what have you like since this is Alien Day? So happy Alien Day, everyone who's just joined us. <laughs> uh, what happy have you, Alien Day? Cheers. What have you purchased? What what damage has your wallet taken? Um, day? pretty pretty small. Day. I was hoping to get the Stompers, but by the time I got out of um. Endgame, my size was sold out, so that saved me one hundred and seventy-five dollars. But um, I went, I got the um, the Ripley Funko with uh, Jonesy, which was a very good purchase. Um, <laughs> and then I pre-ordered the Audible book, and I might get a shirt from um, the Fox website or Fright Rag, but I haven't decided which one. I'm not too enamored with the designs, um, but I might grab something just because it's Alien Day. But um, that's really it. Mm. It's been a strangely so far. It's still still got a couple hours to go here in the, the east coast of the U.S. But a uh, pretty small <laughs> damage have... to the bank account today, thanks to the Alien Stomper's size being sold out. <laughs> yeah, oh, the the only purchase I've made is that that pre-order. I haven't yeah. spent much money. I'm too broke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I only spent only got a couple things, but I might grab one more. <laughs> Cool. Um, oh, I think, um, well, speaking mm-hmm. of, um, I think the Aliens vs. Predator pinball tables are half off today, so don't forget that. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, Alien Blackout's 99 cents. Oh, yeah, that's a steal. Yes. I'm going to have to buy um, it on all of my devices. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have it on my, yeah, I purchased that on because I have a, I had an iPad. So I originally bought it on that, and then I traded in because I wanted to go full Android. I got it on my Samsung tablet, so I purchased it again. I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's commitment. Yeah. That's what you want. Alien, alien, here you alien go. fans. <laughs> yes. Pure support. <laughs> yeah. uh, have you managed to get to a screening of Alien yet? Uh, no. I've seen it. I saw it once in the theater a couple uh, years ago. That was enough. It's, I know there's a theater like half hour from me that was showing it in like the pure 35 millimeter, but I'm like, eh, I don't need to do it again. <laughs> I'll have a screening at, I'll have a screaming, I'll have a screening at home or a screaming or both and uh, just watch it here. <laughs> yeah. You should, if you, how far is USC from you? Is it like on the other that side is- of the country? USC, that, yeah, that's where Jamie and Ryan live. Yes, that's on the other side. <laughs> Oh, okay, because I was going to yes. say, like, they're doing s- screenings there all the time. <laughs> yeah, I live, um, I'm a decent enough, I'm a short enough trip from, away from Manhattan. They're, they're always doing the screenings there, and there's, um, where I live on Long Island, there, there's this, I have a couple places that are always doing them, so it's, I could always see it. Hmm. Sorry, guys, screaming kids in the background. <laughs> <laughs> This is, I'm not joking when they say they call me mother, because I am one. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, One of uh, the comments is, um, 
uh, sorry, uh, Bystander Crux says Rogue One is objectively the best in the universe. 3D Punks says, agree with that. I like them all, really. However, what they did with Emperor Snook, Snook, Snook? <laughs> yep. and um, Bystander Crux also says, the problem with Solo is it's hard to replace Harrison Ford. He's just too iconic. Yeah. Uh, Donald That's Glover right. did a good job, though. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He did, and and Emilia Clark did it embarrass herself, made up for her god awful performance as Sarah Connor in Genesis. Ugh. <laughs> god. You I think I just t- threw up in my mouth. <laughs> you can tell <laughs> that she was just doing it for the paycheck. Like, that's what you can. When people god. do movies and you're like, mm, Jeez. She's, she's not giving her best performance. And who casted her? I mean, the gun was as big as she is. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> She, oh my God, I'm like, oh. Everyone's capitalizing oh. on um, Game of Thrones casts and, and what. Exactly. It's like, could you. Uh, and Jai Courtney, oh boy. Terrible. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Oh. I, I don't like him <laughs> in any of the movies I've ever seen. <laughs> um, I think it was in Divergent no. as well. I didn't like him. Yes, he was. <laughs> no, he was. Uh, he was, um, oh god, he was classed as, in Die Hard, they decided to give, he, he was casted as, uh, as his son, Jesus, why did he get all these big roles, god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if only they'd employ us, we need the money. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I think that's it for, uh, for our live stream. Um, is there anything else you'd love to say to all of the Alien fans out there for Alien Day? Sure. Um, thanks for listening to my uh, ramblings. Um, and of course, you got to shamelessly promote yourself. Check out uh, xenomorphing.com. Like me on the, the Facebooks. Follow me on the Twitters. Um, <laughs> for those who actually appreciate my opinion, I thank you. Um, and uh, I guess that's it. Yeah, I'll make sure I include links on um, the blog to all of your uh, social medias that you're on. And, and yeah, it. come and come and tweet me and Dave and annoy us with all of your alien stuff. Yes. We love to see it. <laughs> Tag us. We'll retweet you, you know, that sort of stuff. You can continue talking to us uh, on Twitter today. And to everyone out there, a happy Alien Day. <laughs> That's right. Happy Alien Day. Enjoy it. All right. See you later. Peace.